because there's been a lot of discussion on this so-called soft economic landing versus a hard one, which would be a recession. Now, it seems we're in a no landing scenario where inflation struggles to reach 2% at all. Factors like rising oil prices, higher shelter costs, and a resilient economy are the reasons. So it's now when or if the plane will finally touch down. Flight crew, please prepare for landing. Fed officials are warning it'll take some time before we hear that, prepare for landing. We do not expect that it will be appropriate to lower our policy rate until we have greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably down toward 2%. We ought to go all the way, because if we stop short, then you all are going to say, well, maybe they're going to stop short next time. Services we thought was going to be extremely persistent has actually come down. And the puzzle is that housing inflation has not come down as we expected. Mohamed el is with me, Julia's as well, to do battle over this. Mohamed, is Julia right that it's June is off the table in many ways? I think she is. In fact, oh. the market is now pricing only a 16% probability of a June cut. So, uh, if, if is there the possibility, in your view, that we could actually see a rate rise? It's not an impossibility, but it would be a huge mistake. And it would be yet another Fed policy mistake. Why? We have a Fed that is very data dependent. They love that phrase, Richard. It means they look at what has happened yesterday in order to determine what will happen tomorrow because their tools act with a lag. So if we continue with hot inflation prints, which we probably will for some time, then there's a risk that the Fed will not only not cut rates, but would increase it. But that will be a huge mistake because the economy is starting to weaken. And if they look forward six to 18 months, they would end up making the slowdown even worse. So this is a very delicate time and one in which the Fed has to go from being data dependent, driving the car, looking at the rearview mirror, to being strategic and looking forward. Julia. Mohammed, you've long said that 2% is the wrong target for the Fed now in this environment. And actually, they should be mentally thinking about a target of around 3%, which argues what you're saying, which is, look, even if you have slightly higher inflation that we're looking at today, it's not a problem. You don't have to message about needing to either hike rates or perhaps not cut rates. How far away from that are we when, when you look at the data and when you try and read between the lines on what the Fed's thinking, even if it's not what they're saying? So I think the data, and I think more generally, what's happening to the supply side globally confirms that 2% is not the right inflation target. But the Fed will not come out and say, we're changing our inflation target because they have overshot it for so long. Remember, inflation was over 9%. They have overshot it for so long that the last thing they'll want to do is change the target because their credibility is already damaged. So what they would have to do, which I think is the right thing, is keep on promising us 2% in the future, see whether we are stable at 3% inflation. I think we will be. And then slowly move from a 2% target to a 2 to 3% target. That's totally doable. And that would not sacrifice what has been U.S. economic exceptionalism. How Except, do they communicate oh, that? Oh, go on, Richard. I'm well, taking over. Uh, yeah, 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 you see, we, we, <laughs> you see, we're ganging up on you, man. It's not often we both get to attack you. And but to take your very, to take your point, Mohammed, if they do that, I mean, they are their credibility is already in the toilet. Essentially, they are saying, well, don't, don't listen to what we say. Just sort of follow on light later. Yeah, the alternative is worse. Like, oh. we shouldn't be here. And we, we hear because they mischaracterized inflation as transitory in 2021. You and I spoke about it. I spoke to Julia about this. <laughs> and they were late. So they got here because of a policy mistake. The worst thing to do is to add a second policy mistake. You know, there is no world of first best once you make a policy mistake. So is it perfect? No. Is it without risk? No. But it sure dominates 
the alternative of sacrificing economic growth and hitting the most vulnerable segments of the population with lower wages, with unemployment at a time when their paycheck has already been eroded due to high inflation. Julio, then when are the markets, when are the markets, Julio, going to grow up and behave like adults instead of children in a playground who've been told you're not going to get a sweet or some candy? Because that's what today's all about. Richard, you're being really tough today. Fed credibility in the toilet and investors acting like, um, you know, little children that are having the lollipop oh, come taken on, away. Come on, just you the two of you. We're Look. not far away from record highs, I would say. And that reality check I mentioned going from you know, wanting it all in January and seeing six to seven quarter point rate cuts, we're now at one to two. So I, I think they've been growing up steadily perhaps over this year. I guess my question to Mohammed at this point is if they're not willing to suggest that they're perhaps going to in their minds move that inflation target, what is the right policy to get us to the soft landing oh. that Richard was talking about? without necessarily communicating, because you're saying that they won't do that, but they could at least use policy to achieve it. What's the right policy to do that? So they need two things, communication and action. Communication is slowly pivot to first characterizing the 2% inflation target as longer term. Chair Powell has started doing that. And then second, take a more strategic view and say holistically, we are not going to be over dependent on past numbers, but we're going to look forward. And then in terms of action, they're going to have to come through with a couple of cuts this year. Oh. If they do not cut a couple of times this year, they will unduly sacrifice growth. And we may see the end of U.S. economic exceptionalism. I'm going to get one more to Mohammed in. Uh, it's an election year. History shows that the Fed moves regardless. Um, if you look at the last goodness knows how many elections, either both up and down, they do continue during it. But this is going to be an election like none other, for obvious reasons. So, Howard, um, do you think there is a point upon which they will say we cannot move because we will be perceived as getting involved in the election? I don't think so, Richard. I think, like what you said earlier, I, I agree. The Fed will do what the Fed thinks is right. However, whatever they do, Richard, they're going to be blamed. If they cut, they'll be blamed by President Trump for favoring President Biden. And if they don't cut, it's going to be the other way around. So they will be blamed whatever they do. But I truly believe they will do what they think they need to do. Thank you, sir. You've been very generous, allowing both of us to have a go at you. Um, and, and to have a but a great discussion. It's an and honor. Great, and great to have you, Julia. Thank you. You'll be with us in a couple of hours on SM. Thank you for doing double duty as well. Kind of you both.